With us now is Florida Democratic Congresswoman Donna Shalala. She represents part of Miami-Dade County and is a former Secretary of Health and Human Services in the Clinton administration. Uh, good morning to you, Congresswoman. Thanks for being with us. Uh, first, your response to the president revealing that he is positive for the coronavirus. Well, it's sad. And we, of course, send our best wishes to the president and the first lady, as well as Hope Hicks and anyone around him that turns out uh, to be positive because of their contact. So um, this is no cause for celebration, but it is a moment in which people will be paying attention. So hopefully uh, it'll be a teachable moment as well. But I, I, I feel for the first lady and for the president, and um, we send our prayers uh, to them. Congresswoman, uh, we're seeing rising coronavirus cases in Florida. What do you make of the governor's uh, response there? Oh, I think it's reckless. I don't think it's based on science. We have to be extremely careful. And I know all of us want to get the economy going again, but getting it going in the middle of, of COVID uh, spread is very, is very dangerous. Uh, look, it's hard to bring the economy in my district back I represent, among other communities, Miami Beach. Miami Beach has 90,000 residents. Last year, they had 10 million visitors. My district has the Port of Miami with the cruise lines. It has part of the airport. It has the downtown hotels. People come for conventions and as tourists. That's not coming back until we can say we are a safe place to come to. And you don't open too soon. This virus is going to be with us for a long period of time, and we just have to be disciplined. Congresswoman, as a former Health and Human Services Secretary, what would you be doing differently right now? Oh, my heavens, from the beginning, um, I, the president, whoever the president I work for, would have taken hold and, and led the country uh, using the Defense Procurement Act outlining what the national government should do, what the state government should do. They're just not working in coordination. This has been chaos, very chaotic, changing advice, leaving the governors on their own, competing for PPE. Uh, this has been a mess and as a result, unnecessary deaths. So um, I, uh, I believe that Joe Biden, that any Democratic president would have taken hold and led the country building a consensus, but more importantly, using our resources uh, to keep everybody to a standard so that we could have starved, starved the virus. And you start by the role of the federal government, which is literally to make the science very clear to everyone. We shouldn't have this variation. This disease doesn't know what state it's in, it doesn't know what community it's in, and it doesn't know what country it's in. It's going to be with us for a long time. There's no such thing as a spike. It's just going to keep going until we starve it with a lot of discipline. Congresswoman, how, how concerned are you that the American people won't get the, the information they need on the president's health, just given uh, the tone uh, of the administration the past four years? Oh, I think I think the press, this is going to be the press's hour. This is your time uh, for carefully explaining, using the sad news about the president and the first lady to explain to the country how important masks are because we protect others, how important it is um, to have social distancing and how important it is to practice good sanitation uh, practices, uh, washing our hands, and being very careful when we're inside with others uh, to wear masks and, and to make sure that everyone in our community um, thinks about others in our community. Um, so it is a, an ex it's a sad issue, but it's an extraordinary opportunity. Congresswoman, uh, your race against Maria Elvira Salazar uh, is looking uh, pretty close right now. President Trump, we know, has been attacking mail-in balloting. A lot of voters in, in your state vote that way. I think about a third in your district in the last election. Um, are you prepared to go to court if the results are in doubt? Um, you know, let's not get there. Uh, we've made changes since the, uh, the Gore-Bush uh, uh, situation. 
Um, I have faith in our election uh, people in Miami-Dade County. Florida has a lot of experience with absentee voting, and we have early voting as well. Um, I think we're pretty well organized. Even the president said we were well organized. Look, he's scaring people about the elections, Republicans and Democrats. That's an attack on democracy, on our most important institution, um, on our right to vote. And um, every state, I hope, is doing what Florida is doing, and that is offering, uh, offering options uh, for people to be able to exercise um, their right to, uh, to vote. And we've got lawyers all over the place. If we have to go to court, of course, we'll go to court. But I'm hoping, um, I'm actually hoping that the uh, that the election will be so overwhelming, both mine and uh, the presidential, that we won't have to uh, do anything like that. And there will not be uh, a lot of problems. But um, everybody is moving in the same direction. We've had bipartisan support for voting um, uh, absentee, actually voting from home uh, in Florida. And we've kept that bipartisan uh, consensus in Florida. So we're slightly different than the rest of the country, uh, but we're going to be watching it like a hawk. All right, so will we. Congresswoman Donna Shalala, thanks so much for your time this morning. You're welcome. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.